family. Well, good morning again, family. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. The text today is the 17th chapter of John, verses 1 through 5. The 17th chapter of John, verses 1 through 5. Full disclosure, sitting with this text, I'm not a crybaby, but this text had me weeping on 64 Highway, coming from Rocky Mount. This text is heavy. John 17 chapter, verses 1 through 5, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads as follows. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself. With the glory which I had with you before the world was. The title of the message today, family, is Blessings from a Rejected Savior. Blessings from a Rejected Savior. Family, blessings can be a phenomenal thing, and we all want them. But we don't always like what they come riding in on or what they're packaged in. Let's not waste any words. The truth about the matter is Jesus is the blessing. All the other stuff that comes along after Jesus is just a byproduct of him. Jesus is the reason for everything that is good in our lives. Can I get an amen? But rejection, on the other hand, is something that we all would avoid if we could. Family, let me ask a question. Is there anyone in the house that has ever been rejected before? Rejection can show up in the best of times. Rejection can show up in the worst of times. But it seems like it's never a good time. But rejection is not always a bad thing. If we look at it through the proper perspective, if we look at it through the God perspective, rejection can drive us to depression, but it also can drive us to our knees. Rejection can cause us to want to quit, but it also can cause us to start again. Rejection can cause us to doubt ourselves, but rejection also can cause me to see something in myself that I otherwise wouldn't see. All I'm saying is rejection is not always a negative thing. When we as followers of Jesus Christ, we take the hit. When we take the hit on the chin and allow the hit to drive us to our knees, that is when blessing can come out of rejection. When Jesus was a child, he suffered through rejection. But as women sit here in the room today, you might have carried a child for nine months and suffered rejection from that child. Not knowing what to do for that child in that situation, but you allow the situation and the circumstances to drive you to your knees until the Lord gave you an answer about the situation. Blessing can come from rejection. You may be in the room and as a married couple and at some point, you was thinking about divorce, but you decided as a couple to put Christ back at the center of your marriage. 
marriage. And once you made Christ the sinner again, God made the marriage better than what it was before. Blessing can come out of rejection. As we sit here now, we might be on our jobs and thinking that we deserve a promotion. But the, but the promotion bypasses us. And in that moment, I feel rejected. Am I going to be rejected or am I going to stand flat-footed and still work as unto the Lord so that the rejection can turn into a blessing? God can use rejection to get our undivided attention. When he has our attention, truth can truly be illuminated. The truth can reveal our faults. The truth can reveal our sins. The truth can reveal our bad choices and our decisions. And the truth can reveal the things that is truly keeping us from moving forward in God. So what does that look like from the negative? Being in a relationship with the wrong person because I couldn't get the one that I wanted. Quitting the job that I do have because I couldn't get the job that I wanted to get. Joining a gang because of the dysfunction that is in my family and join something else that is dysfunctional. Hanging out with people that I shouldn't be hanging out so that I won't look smart. The crazy part about it is that we can find ourselves uncomfortable, but yet still in these places with these attitudes and in these environments and find ourselves stuck. But God, Jesus here in chapter 17, he is praying for himself. He is, and later in the chapter, he's praying for the disciples. He's praying for all that will believe. This discourse falls at the, back of this pa- at the back of the passage from the upper room experience. Judas, by this time, has left to, be- to betray Jesus. Family, we serve a Savior that know what it feels like to be rejected. Judas wasn't the first, and he certainly won't be the last. Jesus was rejected before he was even born. Joseph. Wanted to put his, put his mother away privately. But the Holy Spirit dealt with him and he finally and eventually he came around. Jesus was rejected by his own and as they seen him walking through Galilee, they were saying, isn't that Joseph and Mary's boy? Jesus was rejected. Jesus was rejected by the Pharisees and the Sadducees because he was working miracle signs and wonders and he was disrupting the religious system of the day. Jesus was rejected. But yet and still in his humanity and in his deity, he could see beyond the faults of the disciples that would reject him and betray him and still pray this prayer for himself and them. Because Jesus knows our ending from our beginning. Jesus knows that blessings come out of rejection. Jesus knows that while he was praying this prayer, that right after this prayer, he would have to go on trial. Jesus knows that right after this prayer, that he would have to go to the cross. Jesus knows that right after this prayer, he would have to be crucified. Jesus knows. That blessings come out of rejection. But Jesus also knew that the grave wouldn't hold him. Jesus also knew that God would raise him. Jesus also knew that while he was praying this prayer, that he was going to finish what he started. So let us learn this morning a few things from this prayer. First thing. Prayer reveals his assignment prayer reveals his assignment Jesus prays to the father and the hour has come glorify your son that your son also may glorify you Jesus says to the father that the time family the time is now for me to glorify you how is Jesus going to glorify the father he has to finish the assignment and the assignment is 
go to the cross and to be crucified for you and for I. But how many of you know that the assignment has something attached to it? The assignment has a weight that is attached to it. How do I know that there is a weight attached to this assignment? Jesus said in Matthew 26 and 36, he says, let this cup pass from me. He prayed this prayer three times. He said, let this cup pass from me. But he ended the prayer the same way every time. He said, but no, not my will. But thy will be done. There's a weight that is attached to the assignment. So my question to us today is, are we willing to give God a yes to the God-given assignment that is attached to our lives? Or are we standing back on the edges, scared, fearful, shrinking back because we know that there's a weight that's attached to the assignment? The ministry of forgiveness. We are all called to it. There is a weight attached to forgiving someone that you know that done you wrong. But we are all called to it. There is a weight attached to living this righteous life that God has called us to. There is a weight that is attached to being consistently good and doing the things right consistently. There is a weight attached to Dwight watching his mouth every day. There is a weight, but yet we are all called to it. Family, accept the assignment. You cannot glorify the Father if you don't accept your assignment. Those of us that are in the room, if we're married in this room, Accept the assignment. It is not just to be married. The marriage should image Christ and the church. Accept the weight that comes along with being married. If we're here and we're single, and I'm single, I'm single for a reason. In my singleness, I have more time to surrender to God. I have more time to give to Christ. That he may deal with me about my stuff and that I may bring my gifts and my talents to the kingdom to be used for his glory. Parenting is not an easy thing where we find ourselves now. But we, the season that we find ourselves in right now, there's a weight that's attached to me not being able to go to the golf course and tee off when I need to have my hands solidly on my son. There's a weight that comes along with not going to the beauty salon and sitting in there for six hours when my daughter needs my hands on her. There is a weight that is attached to the assignment. But family, we need to realize that this weight is temporary. This weight will not last forever. The weight that is attached to the assignment is temporary, but the reward is eternal. Nobody knows what it takes to be you. Nobody knows what it took for you to get to where you are. But there's a reason why. There's a reason why you are the way that you are. And it is because there is an assignment that is attached to your reason. God don't waste time. Why do we waste time? The text says the time is now. His time came and the time is now and the time is now for us. Don't waste the time. The time is now. Secondly, family, I ain't going to be before you long. Prayer reveals his authority. As you given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Family, we've been given the We've been given to Jesus as a gift. It is clear that everyone that believes will receive, will receive eternal life. But God has given this redeemed humanity over to Jesus to rule. He's given this redeemed humanity over to Jesus that he may rule over us. John 3 and 35 says that the father loves the son and he has given all things into his hands. All things. 
family, we are his people to rule. So that makes Jesus our king. And since he is our king, he tells us where to go. He tells us what to say. He tells us what to do. Or else he's not your king. So since he is our king, he gives us orders. So my question today is, am I, are you close enough to hear the orders that he's giving you today? My question for me, my question for you today is, in my decision making, do I even consult him about what's next? My question to you and my question to me today is, am I obedient to the king? Am I obedient to the king? The word says obedience is better than sacrifice. So now that I'm obedient, sacrifice comes easy because I'm obedient. Let me say one more thing about this authority and I'm going to move on. God the Father gave Jesus authority over all flesh. Get your mind off of skin and put your mind on thinking. It's a it's a, it's a mindset. It's, it's, Jesus wants to take over our minds. Anything that is opposite of the word of God, anything that is up against anything that God says is righteous and right, is fleshly. It's sin. And we have to find ourselves walking away from that thing and walking towards the God of our salvation. So in life, situations are going to happen where we want to get loose, where we want to say some things. But the question is, do you have enough God in you to push pause and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you when you want to go left so you can pause and allow the Holy Spirit to send you right? That's the difference between reacting and responding. As born again believers, we should be responding, y'all. This, this young man standing in front of me right now, it's my brother. Some of y'all know him, some of y'all don't know him. But we understand authority because we once kicked against it every day of our lives. He, me, we, and some of us in the room did not know what it is to be a man until we submitted under authority. He did not know, he did not learn what it was to be a father until he submitted under authority. He did not learn what it is to be a man faithful to one woman until he submitted under authority. He did not get the mantle of preaching and teaching laid on his life until he submitted under authority. So first, prayer reveals the assignment. Secondly, prayer reveals the authority. Thirdly, prayer reveals his assurance. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. God has sent, God sent the answer. To anything that you don't have an answer for, God has already sent the answer. That they may know you. That they must be in relationship with Jesus intimately. Any man that desires to come to the Father must come through Jesus Christ. If he comes any other way, he's a thief and a robber. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is he communicating? What is John communicating here in the 14th chapter? He's saying, I am the way. I am the path. I am the only way back to God. And if you try to go any other way, you won't get there. So, yeah, I am the way, but I'm not only the way. I am a person. The way is a person. You have to receive the person or you can't get there. The person of Christ died so that we could get there. So Jesus is the way. 
Jesus is the truth, but he is also the life. There is no life apart from Jesus. If you're living now and Jesus is not your savior, you're merely existing. Because at some point it's coming to an end. But in Jesus, there is eternal life. Where we at some point where we get to rule and reign with him for a thousand years, but that's a ways off. But he also has prepared a table in the now. He came that we may have the abundant life now. When, when my assurance, when my assurance is locked in on Jesus, when my assurance is locked in on Jesus, and I believe Jesus, I can do anything. Trust me, I'm not blowing smoke your way. When I'm locked in on Jesus, I can do anything for God in the kingdom of God. When I'm locked in on Jesus, this assurance that I have, it kicks up my faith. It kicks up my faith to another level. The word of God says that it is impossible to please him without it. You can't, you can't please God without faith. But he, he goes on in that verse 6 and he says, but those that come... You must know that he is. You must know that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. There has to be some diligence in this thing, y'all. So, number one, prayer reveals the assignment. Number two, Prayer reveals his authority. Number three, prayer reveals his assurance. Fourth thing and final thing, prayer reveals his ascension. And now our father glorified me together with yourself. With the glory which I had with you before the world was. So Jesus is clearly communicating that he was with God before the world was established. But that ain't it. But that he will also return. Family, this is great news, family. This is great news. Why? Because when he returns, he returned and he's seated at the right hand of the father interceding for us daily. Wrap your mind around this. A savior that is praying for us daily not to fail, but then when you fail, he's okay with that too. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Reality as we know it is that he has done it all. Jesus, family, today, get it in your heart. If you don't get nothing else out of this message, know that Jesus, Daryl, has done it all. Jesus has covered us from the seat at the right hand of the Father, and the Holy Spirit has covered the earth realm. What you talking about, Dwight? When he ascended, the Holy Spirit descended. So do you remember in verse 1 when I said that Jesus started to pray and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he started to pray? That was out of tradition. We learned that in um, uh, small group last week that when he lifted his eyes up he was praying that way out of tradition fast forward 2023 when we pray we bow we bow in reverence to the God that lives in us so what so you trying to tell me that we serve a God that sits high, looks low, a Jesus that sits at the right hand of the Father, and a God that loves us enough for the Holy Spirit to reside in us, and we not winning? We not, we not winning. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. 
The Holy Spirit lives in us. I got my Bible in my right hand. And I'm not winning. Something is wrong, family. Something is wrong. I, I, I'm glad that I serve a God that loves me and us enough to live in us. I'm glad that I serve a God that loved me enough to allow the Holy Spirit to descend. But this dissension, dissension of the Holy Spirit has given us power. It has given us resurrection power. It has actually given us the same power that our Savior had when he was on Calvary's cross. This power has given us the ability to no longer be slave to sin. This power has given us the ability to do things that we haven't even thought of yet, family. So why are we not winning? God the Father is where he's supposed to be. God the Son is where he's supposed to be. The Holy Spirit is where he's supposed to be. The question is, where am I? Where is the white? But when I find myself in the right position at the right time, when God gets ready to release the blessing, no man, no demon in hell can keep God from blessing me and my family. Family, God desires for us to be prayerful about our assignments. And it's not for the reason that some may be thinking. The assignment is not attached to material things because material things will fade away. Your assignment is attached to a soul. You have influence with someone. And if you're not giving your God, if you're not using your God-given ability, gifts, and talents to influence people to come into the kingdom of God, you're worthless. Dwight is worthless if I'm not using my influence for the kingdom of God. Amen. Be prayerful about your assignment. Amen. Be prayerful about walking in your ability to operate in the authority that Jesus has given you now that he has ascended and the Holy Spirit has descended. You have, you have power. You have authority to speak the things. But we have developed a mute spirit for some reason. We have developed a mute spirit while the Holy Spirit lives. Something is wrong with that, family. Pray for the assurance that comes through Christ Jesus. When we're anchored in Jesus and we know that Jesus has done it all and is finished. And all I'm doing is working this thing out, walking this thing out, walking this journey out, living this life out in the power and in the strength of the Holy Spirit. And that I'm assured that whether people on earth think that I'm losing or winning, I've already won. My assurance is in Christ Jesus. Pray for the ascension of God-sized prayers. This is going to sound funny, family. Stop praying for your light bill. Stop praying for God to pay your card note. God is bigger than your house note. If you're going to pray, pray something that you can't do yourself. If you're going to ask the Lord for something, ask him for something that when it shows up, the testimony is he did it. Pray God size prayers, family. And I, I told you all I won't going to be before you long. But God is doing something. Before I left the house, I had word tabernacle rock mount on TV. Kyle had the often appeal, same text. 
Trishonda started her invitation with the same text. I'm starting mine off with today. <laughs> Jesus stands at the door and he is knocking. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Why? Because he wants you to fulfill the assignment that he placed on your life. You cannot glorify God. You cannot please God. You cannot have a fulfilled life if you do not fulfill the assignment that he put on your life. Not what you dreamed up. But the assignment that he placed on me and the assignment that was unearthed through my intimacy with him, through my prayer with him, through my fasting and through my beating down this flesh and denying myself. That assignment is the assignment that has to be fulfilled in the earth today, y'all. Because when we look around, when we look around, y'all, it's rough out here. It's rough out here. But guess what? I'm winning. Come on. But, here's the th but here's the thing. That's not arrogance. I'm winning because of the God that I serve. And I'm not pleased with winning by myself. I want to bring somebody with me so that we can win together, family. So God is at the door. He's knocking. The question is, that's right, Aaron. The question is, will you answer? Will you answer? We say here a lot, answer the call. Answer the call, answer the assignment, whatever lingo you like. Answer. 